What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash Tales from the Customer. All right, this story's called Technically got paid to eat at a restaurant for my honeymoon because our server didn't care about our business. Long. Okay, so I have to preface this with the fact that I still feel slightly guilty for this to this day and it's been over a year because I'm also a server and I know how stressful the job can be. But what's done is done. Also, this is fairly long and I'm on mobile. So I got married in November of 2019 and we kept it super simple courthouse wedding and saved our money so we could go to a super cute little hiking town in the northern part of our state for the weekend directly after the wedding it ended up being an awesome time except for our first dinner as a married couple so we attempted to go to a couple of restaurants that were packed and it took us three tries to find somewhere that wasn't busy which was this almost hole in the wall basement style bar restaurant we are both pretty go with the flow so we decided to try it out we sit at a table, it was seat yourself, and wait. It took about 10 minutes for someone to notice, and that's usually not shocking for a seat yourself kind of place. The girl that we had seemed very distracted and rushed through taking our drink orders. We both don't drink hardly ever, so I had a few questions about the drink menu, and she kept asking me to repeat myself because she was literally not even looking at us. I was wondering what it was that had her attention so badly, and as she walked away, I noticed it. It. Her table of four late 20s, early 30s men that she was heavily flirting with that was almost directly behind us. I'm not judging at all. I serve and everyone has their style of serving to make their money, but clearly, if your style is flirting and you get a table of, let's say, a newlywed couple, you should probably make the most of it and still attempt to do your job. So she goes over and talks with them for 10 minutes without putting in our drink order, then comes back with just my husband, sweet tea, and decides to take our order. We order an appetizer and our mains, and then she stops at the table of men again before putting the food in, and I am still drinkless. Another 10 to 15 minutes go by and I stop another server and mention I ordered said drink and if she could get our server to grab it when convenient, who is hanging off of one of the guys at the other table, and the other server just offered to go get it. She was back in under two minutes and I told her I really appreciated it and gave her a $5 bill because I know how annoying it is to have to help someone else's table. Drink is delicious and I'm a happy camper again. So I've had the drink not even a whole five minutes when our server comes with our appetizer and when putting it down not even looking at our table knocks my drink all over the seat beside me with the appetizer plate she quickly says oh crap i'll be right back to clean that up and at this point my husband is cracking up because this would be just my luck i laugh it off with him and she comes back with a dirty bar towel and places it on the table Ugh. says here you go and goes back to her flirty table i didn't even know what to say so so just like I'm at work, I clean up the mess and wait for her to bring a new drink. And spoiler alert, it never came. A different server comes and brings us our mains and my husband's food. He is very picky, so he just got a burger. Was super burnt and they put the wrong stuff on it and forgot bacon, so we wait for the server to come check in with us and he ends up having to call her over from the flirty table after waiting yet again another 15 minutes. She comes by and he explains and before he's even done with his sentence she cuts him off and just says that's really not a big deal but all right and practically runs and takes his food back my food was great actually and i just ended up sharing his sweet tea with him the food comes back after another 20 minutes still not right but we just decided to give up on the night at that point we finally finished our food and just sat and waited for our server we sat for 20 minutes plates stacked and trash in a pile for her to still be at this table of guys luckily the nice server that had grabbed me my drink came by to clear and we asked if she could grab us our server to get the check she did and then our server was back with the check and placed it down without stopping and walked back to the guys at this point we were considering talking to the manager because it seemed so ridiculous how this server was my drink was on the bill even though i had two sips of it and we decided we would go find them after we paid this is when a higher power was on our side normally my husband pays with card and i will tip in cash he paid for a lot this trip so i said i got this bill don't you worry we fought about it for a 
sec, but he gave in and let me pay. The bill was, I'm pretty sure, roughly around $60. With a good server, I would usually leave around $20 for a tip. So I slipped my $100 bill in the book, and when she came by and grabbed it, we discussed what would be an appropriate tip for what was awful service. She comes back after about five minutes, mumbles, have a good night, and saunters off to her flirty table. We open the book and in there is my $100 bill plus the change from what the bill was, so roughly $140. My brain quickly starts going and my husband looks at me and says, stop thinking. I know this is tough for you, but take that money, put it in your wallet, leave a tip, and let's get out of here. Not your fault she couldn't do anything right tonight. I leave a $10 bill, pocket the rest, and we get the heck out of there. We didn't end up talking to the manager, but as we walked out, we heard her talking about how much of a, a, a rooster block her one table was to the bartender, and that she was trying to get some guy she was serving to get her blow. Her back was to us as we walked out, and I can't help but think how awful her shift closeout must have gone. She definitely didn't have enough for blow now. Edit! A lot of people are shocked I left a tip at all, and Yes, in fact, on a $60 bill, I left $10. But technically, her bank, which if you're not a server, is what you either keep or have to hand in at the end of the night, depending on how you did, would have been $130 short. So she would now owe the restaurant she works for $130. So her tip was technically negative $130. Any number two! I didn't expect this to get so much attention, and to those saying what I did was wrong, you're correct. Correct! I didn't say it was right, and that's why I posted this here and not in r slash am I the butthole. All I did was tell my story, and I won't argue about the morals behind it, because like I said, I, it wasn't necessarily right, but it's how it was handled, and I won't be back to that restaurant because it closed down, and because I don't want to. Yowza! <laughs> um, well, I, I wonder why that restaurant closed down. Beats me. All right, this story's called My Residence Permit Isn't Acceptable ID. Usual disclaimer, it's kind of long, mobile formatting, English is not my first language, so I have no, oh, is my first language? <laughs> Apparently not mine. Actually, that's offensive. Uh, <laughs> so I have no excuse. First ever post on Reddit, so please be gentle. Also, I use Oxford commas, clearly. <laughs> Preface, I've been an international student in the UK for the past two years. I came here aged 19, now 21, so I've never had trouble buying buying alcohol or getting into clubs before, though I'm always ID'd because I have the Asian baby face. <laughs> I was at a big chain store that sounds like Gnome Gardens yesterday when this incident happened. My friend and I were buying groceries, and we picked out a bottle of sparkly unicorn gin as well as other little bits and bobs. We go and pay, and as expected, the cashier asks for ID. Bear in mind, most international students don't carry passports around for obvious reasons, nor do we typically have UK driver's licenses or ID cards, so we use our residence permits. It's a very official-looking biometric card that has all the holographic security details, the UK coat of arms, and a microchip that can be clearly seen when you shine a light through. Cashiers can also use a blue light to check its legitimacy. I show the cashier the back of the card, which has my birth date, and the front that has a picture of me to confirm my identity. She squints at it for a second, and without a word, presses a button beneath her till and sits back with a smug smile. A red light goes on above the till, and the music overhead stops. An announcement blares. Manage out to till six, please. At this point, I'm starting starting to panic a little. My friend and I both have social anxiety, so we're not quite sure how to react and everyone in the queue behind us is rolling their eyes and setting their baskets down. One particular blonde lady at the back glares at me with icy blue eyes that pierce right into my soul. What's going on? My friend asks, but the cashier ignores us and continues to look around for a manager with a smug look on her face. A female manager walks up. The cashier tells her she doesn't recognize my ID. The manager shrugs and walks away to call another manager. Another few agonizing minutes pass, and a mail manager finally shows up. He takes my residence permit from my hands, hello, brovid, and looks it over multiple times with a frown on his face. 
I'm sorry, we only accept passports and UK driver's licenses, so we can't sell you the string. I'm stunned and starting to get pretty upset. Are you saying international students can't purchase alcohol then? The manager stutters a bit, says he'll ask someone, and proceeds to walk off with my residence permit without another word. I'm now in a full-blown panic. I tell my friend he's just walked off with the only thing that proves I'm allowed to reside in the country, and if it goes missing, I can be yeeted back to my country. Country. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was starting to tear up. My friend goes into full mom mode. She's very Irish and has the temper to show for it. She starts complaining up a storm, saying this is ridiculous, she's a bar supervisor, and everyone she works with knows what a residence permit is, and they've clearly not had any training at all. The cashier starts to look a little less smug at this point. She finally stops ignoring us and mutters an apology. To my friend! The manager takes a long while to return it. In the time elapsed, my friend is going mild Karen on this cashier's butt. In my shock, I ask her rather loudly, why does this feel like discrimination? The cashier looks very uncomfortable. People in the queue shift slightly. The blonde lady is still glaring. The manager finally comes back and I basically grab my permit out of his hand. We've never seen this before. No one can confirm it's a legal ID, but I guess I'll permit it. Apologies. He walks off. The cashier sullenly scares scans the alcohol, I pay and we get the fridge out. Now, I'm fully aware that there are heavy penalties for both employees and companies if they sell to underaged kids, so I'm not upset that I was checked. It was the cashier's attitude, the fact that she ignored us completely and didn't explain what was going on at any point, and the manager taking away the only legally recognized ID I had on me without any explanation, that really got to me. The police have been doing random checks on people out of the house because of lockdown, so I would have been screwed without it. I'm not sure if that was the intention, but I walked away feeling like a criminal or a legal alien. My friend is convinced it was racially motivated. She said the fact that they, one, didn't ID her even though they legally have to if they suspect I'm underage, two, apologized to her and not to me, and three, treated me like a criminal until the end proves it. I don't know what to think, to be honest. Anyway, I filed a complaint about poor training via their website, though I've been told it won't go anywhere. Sorry for the long read. If you stuck around until the end, thank you. Update. Home bargains have gotten back to me. Apparently, they've sent the details of the incident to the area and regional directors, and the company directors have made me aware of it as well. Yowza. <laughs> I'd hate to be on the other end of that lawsuit, if there is one. Should be, though. That's redonkulous. Even if it wasn't discrimination, like, the way they handled that was just so poopy. And it's the UK man like freaking fetuses drink alcohol it's like uh, you know like oh you want baby formula you want to breastfeed or do you want a beer bottle it's like that i'm pretty sure from what i've heard at least in germany Alrighty, this story's called, I Miss Brightening Their Evening. About eight or nine years ago, my then boyfriend and I liked to order pizza from one of the pizza delivery places in town. We did this online, and when it came to putting in the name of the person ordering, we tended to put a random TV, film, book, cartoon, anime, comic book character's name. Once we put in Wonder Woman, and our additional note to the driver was, mind the invisible jet. The driver was giggling as we accepted the food and said that everyone at that particular branch loved looking out for what character we were going to do next. Once mid-December, we used Santa Claus as our person and wished all the employees a Merry Christmas. The driver was particularly pleased with this as it was his last delivery for the night and his daughter was with him. My boyfriend was on the larger side and had a Santa outfit he would be using for his younger cousins. He rushed to put it on and accepted the pizza whilst waving to the girl and wishing her well. She loved it. Then, head office slash the big fun killers made us aware that we either used our real names or we wouldn't get a delivery made anymore. The driver for our next delivery expressed how upset the staff were that we were being made to stop as it was something they all really enjoyed and wasn't harming anyone. I wish I could still do that now. It was always great hearing how our silly bit of fun made them happy. That reminds me of this one time, uh, me and my little cousin, we ordered a pizza and we did like this whole, I don't even remember 
remember the lyrics or whatever, but we like choreographed and start like did this whole little music number for the delivery driver because it was always it was always like the same two people and it was mostly this one guy and he really enjoyed it. It was pretty cool. But yeah, I love this. I'm gonna take inspiration from this at some point. <laughs> Maybe if I like order from the phone. Uh, but Cool Beans also sucks that they stopped it. Makes me also think of <laughs> whenever I have to sign for like a sign or like a receipt or something, I always write spaghetti instead of my name. Don't ask me why. They never stop me. It's cute. <laughs> Alright, this story's called PSA for Other Customers. During these brovid times, lots of retailers have one-way aisles. If you are in a store that has made this traffic decision, please adhere to it. I'm sick and tired of people ignoring basic courtesy in general, and now I have to deal with this? Not only do the arrows help with social distancing, they help improve the flow of traffic in general. You shop in the same store on a semi-regular basis, and you know where stuff is generally located. Build a list that is grouped based on the section of the store and have the common courtesy to follow arrows. If my two-year-old can understand arrows in direction, so can you. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye. Bye bonds. What? I, I gotta get that. Bye-bye. Bye bond. Are they saying buy like savings bonds? Is that a good idea? Is the government still gonna be around then when it's time to cash them in? Who knows? <laughs> anyway, I agree with the sentiments that... OP is showing giving what's the correct verb here anyway i don't know uh yes follow the arrows it's not hard F uh fortunately i haven't had the opportunity to screw this up because like whenever i do go, go places like walmart it's just it's a beautiful kind of chaos thankfully it's not always so heavily populate pop populated anyway um you know it's a fun little chaos that i happen to thrive in but um also walgreens usually doesn't have any people in it yeah so i I mean, thankfully, I don't have to deal with these arrows or whatever, so I don't have a chance to mess it up because I probably would um, because I don't know. It seems like a stressful situation for me in particular uh, <laughs> because I just be too aware of, you know, the fact that I could very easily screw it up and it's not that big of a deal. You just follow the arrows, but like I might end up just going down the wrong aisles. Then again, I probably just don't understand how it works. <laughs> anyway, follow the arrows. Much like Toucan Sam says to follow your nose for the fruity taste that shows. Is that Toucan Sam? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.